Hey, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. This is the fourth lesson of Earth's Changing Climate Unit. The title of this lesson is Energy Entering and Leaving Earth's System. And throughout the lesson, I'll explain a little bit more about what that title means. So for this lesson today, you are going to need to have something to jot down your notes, someone to talk to, and we'll be using the sim from Amplify Science. So the Earth's Changing Climate sim will also be helpful. So we took a look at this graph in a previous lesson, and the evidence that we collected in the sim during lesson three showed that changes to carbon dioxide, methane, and sulfur dioxide could increase temperature on our planet. But we need to find out if any of these gases have actually been changing over time on our planet. And so let me introduce you to some of the ways that climatologists study Earth's atmosphere in the past, because you might wonder, how do we know what the atmosphere was like on our planet 100 years ago? We didn't have the same technology. So climatologists use sources such as trees. You can actually drill a little hole in a tree and pull out a core of wood, and you can look at the different rings. And you can do the same thing with glaciers. So if you look at this picture, you can see cores of ice. And there's layers in the ice, and each one of those, those layers contains bubbles of the air in the gas when that layer was collected. So you can count through the layers, and you can actually see what type of gas was in the atmosphere at the time that that layer was formed. It's, it's pretty cool. And so they can look at the amount of carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, methane, as well as other gases that are in our atmosphere. So let's take a look at these two graphs. Compare them, look for trends. Do these graphs have the same trend? So if I look at the carbon dioxide graph, I can see that on the Y axis, the up and down axis, it tells me the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere in parts per million. And on the X axis, it tells me what year it is. So our records start at about 1880 and those match our temperature records. And so if you look at that, you can see that it seems to be going up over time. So as the years have gone on, the carbon dioxide concentration in our planet has also increased. So if we look at temperature, we can see that it goes up and does follow the same trend here. There's like a spike here where the global average temperature uh, went up more than it seems to have gone up over here. But if you look at the general trend over time, you can see that it seems to be going up. So let's take a look at methane gas. So, oh, the methane gas seems really similar to carbon dioxide. If I go back, I can see this is carbon dioxide, but this is the title here has changed. This is methane gas. And so again, I can see the concentration of parts per million of methane gas has increased over time, as has the temperature on our planet. So in the sim, when we added sulfur dioxide, um, concentration up to 500 parts per million, the temperature actually went down. And when we decreased carbon dioxide, or, but when we decreased sulfur dioxide in the atmosphere, the temperature went up. And so if we look here, this is the sulfur dioxide graph of our planet over time. And you can see that um, there's a lot of fluctuations. Remember, that's a word we learned the last time. Fluctuations just mean data that moves up and down. Um, there seems to be an increase um, where it's going up pretty high between 1960 and 1980, and then it's dropping down, and you can see that sulfur dioxide in our atmosphere appears on this graph to be kind of going down at the same rate that it's going up here. I, I would say this is sort of inconclusive. It's sort of hard to tell. There's so many fluctuations here and here, but it, it's not a clear trend like we see with methane and carbon dioxide. So we might want to look at sulfur dioxide a little bit more to see if it's having an effect. So Irene Lee, who is the head climatologist at the World Climate Institute that we're working for as student climatologists, has sent us a new email, and here's what she says. The research you have done so far is impressive. The evidence is strong and supports the claim that increased carbon dioxide or methane in the atmosphere is causing climate change as well as the decrease in ice. In addition to this claim, I want you to investigate other claims. Since we already know that energy absorbed by Earth's surface must be increasing, as a climatologist, the next question is how the amount of energy absorbed by the surface can change. 
I suggest that you look closely at energy entering and exiting the Earth's system, and this will bring you closer to understanding what might be causing climate change. Looking forward to learning your results, Irene, Dr. Irene Lee, head climatologist of the World Climate Institute. So in this email, she mentions energy exiting and entering the system. And I want to show you a cool feature of our sim. If you look at the, the picture on the left, you can see that there is a graphic of a yellow arrow exiting. And there are all those arrows flying around on the sim, but if you click on one, it can actually show you how it can exit. And once it leaves Earth's system, it, it, it's gone but energy also enters the system. The energy that's entering Earth's system is coming from the sun, and the energy that's exiting is just going back out into the solar system. Maybe it will go to another planet or to our moon. So the research that you conducted as student climatologists has shown that the same time that ice is melting, we also saw that carbon dioxide, methane are increasing in the atmosphere, and that can result in higher temperatures, but why? Why is temperature tied to the amount of energy absorbed by Earth's surface? So we might have heard that these gases are increasing or seen it on the graph, but why? Why does having more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere make Earth absorb more energy? So in this lesson, what we're gonna do is go on to the sim. And when we go on to the sim, we're just going to investigate energy in the sim. So at the top, there are a couple of different measurements. There's global average temperature, energy entered, and energy exited. And so we're going to spend some time looking at these data points. The first thing we'll do is we'll run the sim with no change. We're just having all the parts per million of the atmospheric gases at 200. And we'll just see what happens. And then we're going to increase the sunlight. And then we'll increase either carbon dioxide or methane. You can choose, but we'll increase one up to 500. So before we do that, predict what do you think will happen to the temperature? And what do you think will happen to the energy exiting or entering the system? So take a moment to, um, to talk to a family member or friend or jot down on a note. What do you expect to see? So one thing that I expect to see when I go onto the sim is I mean, I feel like if I add more energy from the sun, there's definitely going to be more temperature, more energy absorbed, and then an increase in temperature. And based on the research that we did in lesson three, I know that increasing the gas of either carbon dioxide or methane will also increase the, the temperature, which means the amount of energy absorbed by the system. So let's take a look at it and see what we see. Okay, so to get on to the Earth's Changing Climate Sim, go to seattleschools.org to log into your Clever account. And once you're there, click on the Global Navigation menu and scroll down until you see Earth's Changing Climate Sim. And then go ahead and open it up. So I'm going to do that right now. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increase times four. And then I'm going to hit play. And remember, the first time, we don't want to change anything. We're just looking at the energy entering and the energy exiting, and we're going to let this run till about 40 seconds. Okay, so as I look here, I can see that the amount of energy that came into Earth's system it has been reported at 285, and the amount of energy that's exiting is also 285. So it seems like this Earth system is in equilibrium. The same amount of energy that's coming in is also exiting which shows no change. So what I'll do next is I will increase the amount of sunlight. Let me move my picture. So I'm gonna move that up to high, and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit, I think I've reset this first. Okay, then I'll move it up to high, and then I'll hit play. And times four. It's so many arrows moving around. see that there's a lot of ice disappearing on the surface of the earth and I can also see that the surface is glowing yellow which indicates that more energy has been absorbed and if I look at this I can see that 539 
is the number of energy that's entered and 478 is the amount of energy that's exited. So I would say that this system is no longer stable. It's no longer in equilibrium. There is actually more energy coming into the system than is leaving the system. Okay, so let's do our final test. So let's increase methane gas and hit play at times four just to speed it up and make it go quickly. And if I look at this, I can see again, the surface of the earth is glowing quite yellow and the ice has started to melt. And I'm gonna pause it there. And if I look at this, I can see that the energy that's entered is 312 and the energy that's exited is 262 which is significantly less than the amount of energy that entered. So once again, the system is not stable. So even though energy is moving around a lot when the sim is running, the amount of energy entering is balanced by the amount that's, that's exiting unless we do something like change the gases in the atmosphere or increase the amount of sun. When we do that, the system is no longer stable. So let's try one more thing. What if I decrease the amount of energy that's entering the system. So I'm gonna reset it, and I will just take sunlight, and I'm gonna turn it to low. And then I'm gonna change that to time four, and then let's hit play. And so again, lots of energy coming in and out of the system, but I notice um, that the ice has actually expanded a little bit, and the global average temperature is dropping, and if I stop it, which I should have done at 40, I can see that more energy is actually exiting the system than coming in. We have 302 for energy exited and only 294. So we could say that this system is not stable. It's not in equilibrium. There's more energy leaving than coming in. So this is a brand new key concept that we've just learned for this unit. We've learned that a change to either the amount of energy entering or exiting the, exiting the system can affect how much energy is absorbed by the surface. So this key concept can actually be broken down into two smaller key concepts. The first one says temperature increasing is if more energy enters than exits and temperature decreases if less energy enters than exits. So that's just taking our key concepts and breaking it down just a little bit. So there's one other thing though. In the sim, we noticed that if we increase the amount of sunlight on our planet, that that actually um, will allow more energy to come into Earth's system. So is it possible that an increase in energy from the sun could actually be the cause of the most recent climate change? So we do have data of the amount of energy that's been coming from the sun over the same amount of time as we have for the global average temperature. And if we look at our graph here, there's a lot of fluctuations going up and down, just like there are with the global average temperature um, graph, but it's not the same trend. We would expect to see the graph going up on both of them if the trend was the same. And it's not. So we can rule out the idea that energy from the sun is actually causing the, the most recent climate change. So when I say the most recent climate change, there's actually something kind of fascinating that I want to share with you, which is that this is not the first time the Earth has experienced climate change. I don't know if that's surprising to you or if you already knew that, but if you look at this picture here, you can actually see a picture of a Triceratops. And one thing that we know is that Triceratops and other dinosaurs may have gone extinct because of a change in their climate. And so we're going to read an article called Past Climate Changes on Earth. And this article is going to describe scientists' best understanding of why different time periods on our planet had different climates. And so the first part of the article is, is titled Alligators in the Arctic, the Eocene period. And it's going to talk about a time on Earth's planet when it was so warm that even Antarctica had alligators and subtropical temperature. And then there's another time called the Cryogenian period, or sometimes we call it the snowball Earth, when Earth was very cold and had a lot more glaciers than we have now. And so we're going to be spending a lot of time in lesson five, digging through this article, reading parts of it, and looking at the sim to try to understand how 
when energy comes into our system, how that can increase the amount of energy absorbed by the Earth's surface and also increase global average temperature. To get a, a copy of this article, you can get it in two places. You can either go to the Seattle Public Schools Science Department website, which is at www.seattleschools.org slash academics slash curriculum slash science. And then when you get there, just scroll down till you get to middle school and then download the lesson four packet for Earth's Changing Climate Unit. And you'll see the article past climate changes on Earth and you can read that. Or you can go to Amplify Science and just do that by logging into Clever and going to your account just like you go to the sim. But instead of choosing the sim from the menu, choose the library and then go to Earth's Changing Climate Unit and choose the article Past Climate Changes on Earth. And let me show you what that article looks like. I have a picture of it right here. And if you look through this, you can see that same picture of our Triceratops that's in a little bit of trouble. And if you go down, you can see this really cool picture about the Arctic and it's the caption here says during the eocene period even the arctic was warm enough to be comfortable to be a comfortable home for organisms that need warm conditions and if you scroll down it has some ideas about what might have caused this change in climate during the eocene period and it talks a little bit about how energy entering or exiting earth system can make an effect it also mentions some other cool things that were happening during the eocene period on our planet and then it goes into the cryogenian period, which marked a time when our planet was quite cold, and it has some ideas to share with you about what happens when the Earth receives less energy than exits. And as you're going through this article, you'll have an opportunity to use some of the information that you've learned from the sim today and in lesson three, and also to come up with some new ideas about how the current climate change might be similar or different than climate change in the past. Okay, so read the article to be prepared for lesson five, and I'll see you next time.